you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews back with yet another review. And it is uh, Trappist beer time. Hmm, it's probably my favorite kind of beer time. Um, there's a lot of beers I like. You know, I, I love English Old Ales. Uh, I love me some, you know, Imperial Stouts. I love me Barrel Age stuff. But Belgian Ales, specifically Trappist Ales, just do it for me because that is where I kind of got started with my whole beer journey. And uh, here we have La Trap Quadruple, which is, um, as far as I'm concerned, one of the King of Kings of that style. Um, always been a big fan of La Trap. Um, love their double, love their quad, love their barrel aged stuff. They do a barrel aged quad, they do a barrel aged Isador. Excuse me. One of the few Trappist breweries that actually barrel aged stuff. Um, sort of a slightly progressive, I guess you could say. But we're going with the straight up quad. And uh, yeah, super excited to review it. I've had it many times before. It's probably been a while since I've had one. It's just one of those beers that kind of you don't think about or I don't think about um, till I kind of pick it up to review it or something like that. So I'm super excited to give it a whirl um, as far as what it says on the, on the bottle. Um, La Trap Quadruple Trappistale, uh, Abbey uh, Koningshoven. Alcohol 10% on the back. Government warning stuff. Trap a stamp. Date code. I know. No trap date codes. Uh, it says K06A14, which A14, that means basically January 2014. So this is a, a year old. Almost on the nose, which is pretty awesome. Because uh, that's right when I think Belgian quads start to really open up and become great. Um, let's see on the side here, got a little bit of a story. Since 1884, the monks at Koningshoven have brewed the trap ales to support themselves, made, um, support themselves period. Uh, made with uh, traditional ingredients and age-old recipes, La Trap ales use the most modern quality control methods to produce a beer that is the perfect marriage of old and new. Fermentation takes place using a type of yeast which is most active between 62 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This type of fermentation is called top fermentation. Trappist ales are made from carefully selected malt and hops fermented with a strain of yeast unique to Koningshoven. Each of the trap ales bottled is conditioned for full, complex flavor and long shelf life. Unlike commercially produced, filtered, and pasteurized beer, the trap ale can be aged like fine wine. Uh, 25 BU, so IBU. And that's pretty much it. Uh, well, well, malts, pale, caramel, Munich, and roasted malt, hops. Uh, Heliter, I can't read that. Scraped off. Northern Brew, uh, Slovenian Super Stryer. So there you go. Label wise, awesome. It's awesome. It's Belgian style labeling. You know, it's quintessential label. Love everything about it. Big fan. Um, other than that, probably the only thing I could really dump on about this is it has a synthetic cork. Not that I have an issue with synthetic corks as far as longevity or whatever. But I can never get them off. I think that's a, that's why this is about a year old. I think they went back to actual regular corks. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they did. So let's see if we can get this sucker out there through natural means, which is uh, brute force from my hand. I'm not going to. I just yeah, that's not coming off. So we're gonna have to go with my super ghetto wine opener that I have sitting here. Let's see if we can get this sucker out. Yeah, synthetic corpse, corpse. Yeah, the synthetic corpse, corks. Whatever. I don't know how they hold up over time. I would assume they would hold up decently, but as far as removal, man, Jesus Christ. <sighs> Makes a nice sound though. <laughs> okay, so let's see what this sucker has to offer. <sighs> Throwing down a big head tonight. I did a, another Belgian review earlier. Kind of got a nice big head off of that one also. Um, it's beautiful, you know. has a nice, uh, super creamy top. It's so thick and dense, it's kind of slanted. That's not a camera messing with you. Um, nice uh, random bubble size kind of going smaller to bigger up top, but it's kind of all over the place. Um, just... 
a nice cream color to it. It's not white, it's not beige, it's somewhere in between. And uh, beer color wise, I mean, it's got that, that quintessential, if you watch any of my other reviews before, I talk about how I like my Belgian doubles and my Belgian quads to have a kind of um, this density to them, this kind of fluffy, unfiltered creaminess, a combination of viscosity and unfiltredness, and this has it in spades, you know, it's not clear, it's not super cloudy, it's just that perfect marriage of, of density and, and, and thickness, so yeah, looks beautiful, let's see what she smells like, that is what quads are supposed to smell like. And you look up the textbook definition of a quad, you know, you're going to get your your breads, your um, dark fruits, you know, your datey figgy kind of stuff going on. It is what it is, you know what I mean? Dark ripened fruits. A little bit of cherry maybe. But there's also this nice sweetness to it, this, this burnt brown sugary sweetness, almost boring on molasses. Ah, just have it in a glass. Absolutely smells beautiful. Absolutely looks beautiful. Let's take a sip of beautiful. Cheers. Mm. Oh boy. Tell you what. That is a freaking fantastic beer. That's a freaking fantastic beer. I mean, this holds its own with any other quad up there. I've had them all. I've had, you know, Rocheforts, you know, your 10, your eight, your six. I've had your St. Bernardus 12 and eight. I've had your freaking, I've had your West Veltrin or West Veterlin or whatever you want to call it. I've had, you know, your um, 12 and your eight. Um, I've had your Chimay blues and reds. Uh, I have had your West Veltrin post-2005 and pre-2005. Anybody who's ever had post and pre-2005 West Veltrin can tell you there's a marked difference. And uh, uh, this is up there, man. I'd love to do a real true blind taste test. And I'll probably do that. It'd be a great review to do. Um, or not review, just kind of blind taste test it. Let's see if I can pick out which one I like. But based off of what I'm getting off of this beer right now. Which is beautiful fruit. Perfect sweetness. Epic mouthfeel. Everything about it is quintessential Belgian quad. And I have a hard time finding one that bests this greatly. I mean, they're, they're, they're better, probably. I would probably put it in my number one spot of Rochefort. Even over Westies. Maybe, I don't know about the pre-2005 Westies. I probably put those ahead. But, I mean, Rochefort's probably number one in my book. And this is probably a close, close second tied with the Westie. Um, yeah, just an absolutely fantastic beer. Mm. Mm. It's just like... It's a pruny, figgy, datey ready explosion in your mouth but it's not over the top it's like it's super flavorful but it's not like dialed to 11 and, and you know I love some things dialed to 11 and I love my over the top beers but this is like just so classically beautiful and classically good and classically well balanced and everything about it just reeks and screams uh, beauty and I'll tell you what man it doesn't get much better this than this, at least for me, when it comes to the beer world. Uh, rating wise, I would give this beer a 94. Um, it just for a classic trap trappist quad sense, it's just that good of a beer. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, if you've never had this before, and you've had Belgian quads, and you want to know what a quad is, like a lot of people, and I've talked about this before, a lot of people have a hard definition of telling you what a quad what makes a quad a quad and not a Belgian strong dark and it's kind of hard um, definition or hard separation to to talk about and be like what makes it drink this 
and get a quintessential Belgian strong dark as far as somebody else with the classified as and drink the two and then you'll know the difference. Just this embodies everything that's all about. So I'll give it a you know, what I say, ninety four um, overall. Uh, value and availability again, that's kind of you know, one of the best things about um, about La Trap and Chimay and Rochefort and all that you can usually get them and they're not too bad. Uh, I can get La Trap quads whenever I want. Avail availability, ten. Value. Four packs usually run me around twenty bucks, and bombers uh, usually run me about twelve, thirteen bucks. I think that's a fantastic price point for a ninety-four beer. So I would give that a nine on a value, uh, value scale. It's just across the board, nines to tens. And like I said, to me, it doesn't get much better than this beer. Everything about it, from look, the smell taste, the value, the price point, availability, it's a freaking home run. So there you go. That's my review. Mm. I forget how good it is. I always forget how good it is. And then I pick one up and then I drink it and I go, idiot, <laughs> why are you not drinking this? So there you go. Um, La Trap Quad. If you like good beer, pick it up. That's my recommendation. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. If you did or you didn't, or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you'd like to check us out anywhere else on the internet, you can. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Untapped. Massive beers in all four of those places. And yeah, another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a world-class beer right now. And hopefully you see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>